Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. If you would now, please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you in the name of Jesus and praise your name for the many blessings that you shower upon us each day. We thank you too for your mercy and your grace, which are abundant for us every day and anew for us every day. Now, Father, as we open our hearts and our minds to your word, I'm asking you to help us to see in this study how we can apply it to our own lives and be better examples for you and be better disciples of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we will begin our study in verse Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. So 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 9. No widow may be put on the list of widows unless she is over 60, has been faithful to her husband, and is well known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, showing hospitality, washing the feet of the saints, and helping those in trouble, and devoting herself to all kinds of good. So if you would look back at verse 5 and 6, and Paul has some additional instruction or some initial instructions there for the widows that are really indeed in over 60. And let's read those verses. The widow who is really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. But the widow who lives in pleasure is dead even while she lives. So here Paul in these verses 9 and 10 is addressing again the widows, uh, young and old, and gives some instructions as to how he thinks that they should be provided for. And especially for those that are over the age of 60. Then in verse 11 through 16, Paul deals with the younger widows. So widows must be 60 in order to be put on the list or roll that is the official register for the widows. And according to the commentaries, there are perhaps six qualifications that a widow must meet in order to be placed on this roll. In addition to the age qualifications, she must have been faithful to her husband, known for her good deeds, such as bringing up children, and this could mean not only her own children, but also taking in orphan children and raising them in the church. Then also showing hospitality. In that frame time, uh, time frame, hotels or inns were few and far between, and even those that you could find were not very reputable and were also very expensive. So uh, it was a practice of the church people to house traveling ministers or strangers. Then another qualification was washing the feet of the saints. This qualification is one that is hard to imagine because this would be the job of slaves and the very and the most meaningful of their duties or the most menial of their duties. And also, women were not normally given positions within the church which would enable them to perform this task for the leaders of the church. The commentary suggests that this could refer to women being able to accept the humblest of tasks in the service of Christ and his people. What this says to me, and I think also to all servants of Christ, is that we need to be willing to do those things that others are not willing to do and to accept those and do it regardless of whether it is considered great or small and to do them without grumbling and also without expecting any kind of thanks or recognition. Then the next qualification, which is the sixth one, says that uh, the widow should be known for helping those in trouble and devoting herself to all kinds of good deeds. And again, in that time frame, it was unusual 
it was not unusual for followers of Christ to be persecuted, and one of the virtues was to be willing to aid such persons that had been persecuted, even if it would, would bring trouble upon themselves. All of these qualifications that Paul talks about here, or all of these traits, are such that each of us should strive for in our own daily walk with Christ. Perhaps this could be what it means to let your light shine and to live in such a way that others will see Christ in you. Then in verse 11 through 16 of chapter 5, Paul addresses some of his thoughts concerning younger widows. So verse 11, As for younger widows, do not put them on such a list. For when their sensual desires overcomes their dedication to Christ, they want to marry. Thus they bring judgment upon themselves because they have broken their first pledge, because they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house, and not only do they become idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things that ought not to be said. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no cause or no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. If any woman who is a believer has widows in her family, she should help them and not let the church be burdened with them so that the church can help those widows who are really in need. The commentaries suggest here that Paul is addressing an issue of the society in which the early church found itself. Paul suggests that the young widow remarry and busy herself with rearing a family. The problem which could occur was that the young widow would take the vows of the church to devote herself to the church and then later become restless and forsake that vow and remarry, thus breaking her, so to speak, marriage to Christ. This would be frowned upon. And then another problem was that there were no opportunities or very few opportunities for young widows to support themselves other than turning to prostitution. And doing this would make her an outcast in the community. The Christian woman should either remarry or devote herself to the life of the church. Regardless, the perils of idleness remain the same in any age. Too much time on one hand leads to restlessness, to going from house to house, talking and gossiping and being busybodies. This leads to no good, which gives Satan an opportunity to do his satanic work. That leads to destruction and not good for the church. So the advice Paul gives is to remarry and to engage in the greatest task of all, that is, rearing a family and making a home. Christianity is a... Well, let me back up and say one thing before I get to that. <clears throat> the commentaries also suggest that one of the concerns that Paul had in writing the pastoral letters was to show the, the how the Christian appeared to the outside world. Does the Christian give opportunity for the outside world to criticize the church, or does he give reason for the outside world to admire it? It is always true that the greatest handicap that the church has is the unsatisfactory lives of professing Christians, and equally true that the greatest argument for Christianity is a genuinely Christian life. And we faced that in our own day and time that where we look at people and say well if they're a Christian I don't want any part of that but then if we look at others and say wow that really exemplifies the life of Christ and I think I would like to be a part of that so which do we, we reflect in our society I think that we are all sinners saved by grace and we should strive to be a reflection of Christ in our every thought and action Paul concludes with verse 16, stating that if any woman who is a believer 
as widows in her family, she should help them and not let them be a burden to the church, thus allowing the church to help those who are truly in need. Good advice for families today. We should assist our families in times of need to the extent possible. Well, I have enjoyed sharing with you this morning, and if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address, and I will address them. I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time in the Lord, and may he continue to richly bless you as we enter into this season of Advent. So go in peace and in the love of God.